don't get ready. It'll be here any minute. Is that a rifle? You don't know what a rifle looks like? It's just swords were your thing and guns were mine. But I guess we're both doing guns now. I just didn't know that. Well, that's intense. I see it within you. Fear. Jealousy. Betrayal. It is our duty to cleanse the universe of this weakness. You know, they told me you people were conceited douchebags, but that isn't true at all. Dude! Ah, uh, I'm using my wrong eye. Throat, put your seatbelt on! Jack up our prices for two time galaxy savers. Yes! searching for your whole life. It's right there by your side all along. You're right. All you do is yell at each other. You are not friends. No, we're family. Except maybe her. After all these years, I've found you. And who the hell are you? I'm your dad, Peter. Give it up one more time, right here. How's it going? Drax and Yondu. Uh, guys, congratulations. You made a great sequel. You made a sequel that rivals as it may be better than the original. That's amazing. Really? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We made a sequel. It was, it's a good one. It's a sequel. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's its own thing. Oh, it's not a sequel at all? No, no, not at all. Don't let anybody fool you. It's its own thing. It's, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's standalone. You could, you watch. Standalone movie. Yeah, these that's are, right. these the are Ballad of Yondu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, Guardians of the Galaxy, the, the first one, I know this isn't a sequel, but that comes out, it's a massive success. Right? Obviously, the studio is going to want you guys to make a sequel. I think they signed up for one you know, right away. That means you're going to have to sign on to a sequel. What's your biggest fear going into that? As soon as you hear the news, there's going to be a sequel. What creeps in your head? <laughs> I can pay the mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, I don't have to move out. Well, the funny thing is they announced the sequel before the first one was released. So, and we had a lot of pressure going into the first one to begin with. <laughs> but now that they've already announced a sequel for the first one that's coming out, we don't even know if it's, we think it's gonna be a success. We didn't realize how big of a success it was gonna be. But I mean, talk about putting pressure on us, man. I, I don't know, man. I, I didn't, did you really feel pressure? You, you never feel no, pressure, never do you? I always feel pressure. Feel pressure. I, I, I feel I pressure right feel... now. <laughs> We That's were, right, you do. We were coming here, and I was stressed because I thought this was going to be one-on-one -on -one stuff. I was like, oh, man, I'm most stressing about it. And they said, well, worker's going to be there. I was like, great, I'll let him answer all the questions. <laughs> so that's why, whenever you ask anything, I'm just going to go. Yeah, that's right, and then, then I'm going to just refer it back to Dave. Yeah, you're just shooting the shit. You're the one fielding the question seriously and actually oh, handling the weight, Dave. Oh, I never, no, 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 you're never going to get a serious answer. Never. I know. No. Please, you have to pay me for that. But they'll be in, they'll be they'll be interesting. They'll be interesting. They'll probably make news. He may steal a shoe and start throwing it at people. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> you you steal shoes? What? This morning I did something and I I don't know. It was just on the spur of the moment. Um, the guy asked me a question. I didn't want to really answer it, and so I just took a shoe off and threw it in the audience. Can and, I, can and then the woman. The, yeah, her shoe too. Yeah. <laughs> and she I, had. Unfortunately, the poor girl had a big hole in her sock. <laughs> Just so, just so I don't find myself asking this question that you don't want to answer, what was the question? I don't remember. 
Okay, okay. So I, remember I, may, the question. I may step into this one myself here. If I, if I ask watch that out, question. watch out. No, you have tie laces. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't deal with that. Okay, thank God. Thank God. So were there any places that you guys wanted your characters to go in the sequel? Did you have hopes or, or fears about where they might take your character before you got the script? Uh, Dave, um, what, you, you, we got, uh, both of us, both of our characters got, uh, uh, the audience got ample opportunity to see us in uh, crazy awesome angles and different situations, I, I think, yeah. that we didn't get to do in the first one. Yeah. And uh, we owe it all to James Gunn. He yeah. wrote all this stuff. He really did some brilliant writing. Boy, we, were we, I don't know about you, but I was pleased as hell. Yeah, I thought they were going to go a different direction with Drax. That's what I had in my mind for a couple of years. I thought he was going to be more of uh, the Drax the Destroyer, the comic book version. And I think James just really tapped into something special on the first one with the comedic value. And he, I think he wanted to kind of you know amplify that a little bit more. So he went that direction. But it wasn't what I was expecting at first. And when I first actually when I first read the script, uh, I usually go over my dialogue first. And I read my dialogue, and I just didn't think it was funny. I just I, I, I didn't either. I don't find, <laughs> I, don't. I, I don't find myself funny at all, and it's very dry stuff. And I was reading it, and I was like, man, that's really not funny. And I didn't, really didn't realize till we did the the cast read the table. Well, read. the best the best part of uh, of uh, a funny the best part of being funny is when you don't know you're funny. And so, <laughs> I mean, I don't. I must be fucking you're, hysterical. You're you're, you're <laughs> you're you are a funny guy. I mean, you're really funny. You're funnier than me, and I'm not funny at all. Because you know you're oh, No, not at all. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to Joe Pesci you from Goodfellas right now or something. So, Dave, you get to this table reading, and you're worried that, it's, that you're not going to be funny. Yeah. But what happens? People started laughing at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, but I, I love the script as a whole. I love the story. I thought it was really deep and emotional. But just my part, I just, you know, I, I just didn't get it. And when I, we started reading it, and then just, you know, we start bouncing off. My co-stars, they're so great. And, you know, we have a lot of chemistry together. So I just started, it just started feeling better. By the time we got into rehearsals, even I was laughing at myself, which is, it was just a rarity. You know, I mean, I laugh at myself. But, but not, you feel good about it now, right? I feel wonderful about yeah. it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. That's so, usually I'm what so happens. proud of this film. I'm so proud of this film. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I imagine you're quite proud of the film as well, Michael. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to give anything away, but there's a lot to be proud of in this film, in this film for you. Yeah. Indeed, indeed it is. Uh, uh, Mr. Gunn wrote uh, an awesome role for me, and I got a chance. I got a chance, like I said earlier, you get to see uh, uh, all of us in the, the, this varying new, new situations and different angles, you know. It's kind of like, it was pretty cool. One minute uh, you, you, you get Yandu in an uh, interesting, quiet, vulnerable moment, and it's just like, oh, wow. I've never seen that from this character before. And then, and then he, all the next he, minute, you're back to badass, right. kick-ass yachting. Yeah. So he boom. steals his film. I've, we've talked about it, and I, I've been very open. I, I really believe in my heart that he steals his film. Yeah. Uh, his, he brings so much depth to his character. And Yondu is a very obscure comic book character, and he's just made him a standout character, man. It's uh, it, brilliant. It's, his performance is incredible. I think it's your performance. I also think it's something Gunn is such a massive fan of yours. I mean, you've been in a few of his films, right? Mm -hmm. Not just yeah. the, oh, yeah. not just Guardians, but I think you were in Slither as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, Slither and what else have I done with Gunn? Oh, I've done many things. Uh, we've got, uh, I call him my my life director. Your life director. Yeah, my life director, not just the director in the movies. I, I call him all the time and say, dude, what, what should I do? Dave thinks he's funny. He thinks he's funny now. I mean, should I laugh? Should I laugh at him? <laughs> and James goes, just shut up, Rooker. Oh, God, Rooker. Why did you call me, man? I'm about to go to sleep. But I, I imagine a lot of this film comes from someone who's been a fan of yours for, for quite some time and, and wanted to give you your due, if, if, if that makes sense. Did it feel that way? Was it presented to you that way? It, I, don't, I don't know if it, it was never presented to me that way, but when you read it, you're like, damn. <laughs> you're I mean, they, he thinks I can act. You know, <laughs> but, and you I really gotta feel play this now, it, right? When it's, when it's done and it's when you edit it together, you yeah. really feel it. Yeah. You really get a sense of it. Yeah. Good. The uh, the soundtrack again is is amazing. Incredible, incredible song selections. Do you guys listen to any of this music on set while you're while you're acting? Does it sort of help keep the vibe of the film? We did. I mean, yeah, we did. We had to. We always always constantly both films. Yeah, there's all kinds of music going on, and there's all all sorts of uh, like situations where. Um, Boy, oh boy. I mean, uh, 
fun stuff. Yeah, it, right? just, it usually just I mean, helps really, us get into the rhythm, stuff. to the mood. Uh, you know, it helps the us set an emotional going, tone. It gets a uh, total, usually, total. We always listen to the soundtrack, and we also big setup. It was yeah. a cool thing when we received the script for this film. We also received uh, the soundtrack with it. So we kind of listen and just start to put it together, you know. So. Chain, I imagine the chain was number one on that soundtrack list, considering how it works in the, in the film. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Let me hear you. Can you do it? Chain. The chain? Chain. I am not going to do that. <laughs> Are you going to do it for me? Boom, 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 boom. How's that? <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> So most of this, when you guys are shooting this film, most of it's green screen. When you say, when you say chain, what chain what? What is this chain? Are there words? <laughs> I'm, think, to... I'm thinking Aretha Franklin. Chain, chain, chain. You know? That was change, right? I don't know. I don't I can't hear. Was it change? It change. Was it change? I, I, said... I don't know. I, think, <laughs> I always thought that song was called The Chain for some reason. I don't know. You... I don't know. But I always thought that Fleetwood Mac song was called The Chain. Maybe I'm the wrong. The Chain, it is. It's I, the, this is yeah. But yeah, they're saying the change in the song, right? No, no. We don't know. They're saying change? I don't know. What do you think they're saying? Fucking out of here. <laughs> chain for sure. <laughs> chain Who knows sure? the answer to this, guys? <laughs> so you guys are when you guys shoot these movies, it's all it's all green screen for the most part, right? You're shooting. You guys are all shooting on green screen. How do you maintain a, a good time? How do you maintain sort of a? Well, it's not reality? all green screen. We got practical we stuff going on. We got a practical set, right? We yeah, got we some had practical. A forest. It was pretty cool. Yeah, and we have practical uh, uh, props and yeah. stuff, and spaceships and and weaponry and all that kind of stuff. But the all the all that all that other stuff, the explosions and the background and Ego. all that is yeah. all CGI. Yeah. Man, it's yeah. beautiful. They did an amazing job in this right. film, sort of creating a world that we've never seen created with yeah, CGI. Yeah, Usually yeah, yeah. CGI is doing stuff or adding something to what's supposed to be a realistic environment. This is a completely right. fabricated, beautiful world. Yeah, right. well, the forest was... Did they have real trees? I, yeah. I think they brought in some real trees and they had uh, uh, fake trees, you know, prop trees, and, and they were so good, the, the artistry and the craftsmanship and in, in, in making this whole forest. Remember the, when we, were, uh, we surround a rocket and, mm -hmm. in, the, in the beginning of the movie? Yeah, there's a lot of detail that goes Good stuff, yeah. good stuff. Oftentimes the sequels have a bigger budget. Did you guys have, did it feel different shooting this one? Did it feel like you had a lot more room to work and, and, and play and maybe uh, the studio gave you a little more room? We had a we had a larger budget in this one, and but uh, we came in under budget, didn't we? Yeah, it seemed like you know the the sets on the first film were much bigger and more elaborate. It seemed like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know the on cost. The first of one, on yeah, the first one, yeah, you the thought first one with the kiln, I mean, being like a full blown set. Yeah, okay, true. And the dark but my ship was sets. like way bigger. Yeah. This time around. This <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, man, it was like a. I, I don't know. Gun knows the. It's like 250 feet or something like that. It was a massive, well, that's massive. Set. This movie was all about you. And ja. <laughs> <laughs> you and baby. Drew. Uh, you know, my ship was uh, my uh, the first one. My, the ceiling on my ship was really low, and I I, I accounted that to like budget. Reasons and so hence I had to have a. a you just can't afford a higher ceiling. I know, Sorry, I can't Michael. A ceiling. Spaceship so roof your, was too your low. Mohawk is really short. It's, oh, gee. Right? I had a little stubby mohawk, <laughs> mohawk. and um, and so the second one I I knew right away that uh, the budget's going to be higher and so my ceiling's going to be higher because my because my fin is bigger. The budget really has a trickle down effect, doesn't <laughs> That's it? Right. That's right. It does, baby. Dave, where does uh, Drax's laugh come from? It comes from... <laughs> from me, I taught him how to laugh. <laughs> well, for that and oh, from, no, no. from James Gunn's amusement. He, you know, we did it um, on the first film. We were doing this, this scene where the Milano was crashing, and he thought it'd be funny if, you know, while everybody else was terrified, if I was laughing like I was on a joyride. So I did it, and I started laughing, and I was laughing, and I could hear him laughing. But he comes on, and he goes, can you do it bigger? And I just started, it got bigger and more ridiculous, and the bigger it... <laughs> the bigger it got, the bigger he wanted it. The louder I could hear him laughing. <laughs> he was just doing it to amuse himself, and it got so loud, so big that I lost my voice. So really, I mean, I remember that. He's yeah. like, I, you're out there, your arms <laughs> spread, and you're laughing, and you're. <laughs> this guy, he's like, I'm looking. I'm, <laughs> I'm going gun. He's not good. He, uh, he's new. He's new. He doesn't know. He doesn't no know to, to to not listen to you sometimes. <laughs> So you were telling James Gunn, what was Gunn saying? Shut up, Rooker. Bigger, 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 Dave. Dave, 
when you're being told bigger, bigger, bigger on something like this, like uh, as, my, as Michael said, you're somewhat you're somewhat new to this. You really have to have a leap of faith there, a lot of trust in the director because you probably felt slightly ridiculous in that moment. Oh, I, I feel absolutely ridiculous in everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I I do I trust him and and completely and and since day one since we first walked worked together in, in our audition. Audition. I felt comfortable with James, and I, I trust him him completely. If he asked me to do something, I'll do it without hesitation. Now, Drax has a a, a new friend in this Mantis. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about your relationship with Mantis? It's uh, it's great. It's really um, we make this really strong connection, and I think I like the way I like to describe it. And some people may not see this, but I think that Drax and Mantis both both have this uh, very childlike innocence, and I think that connects them. And I think that um, Drax becomes very protective of her because of that that connection that they've made. And he's become like a, kind of like a big brother or appointed mm -hmm. himself a mentor. But definitely in Mantis, and I mean, Palm and I have great chemistry. Uh, she has a really great ability, the same ability I do. She can deliver a, a very funny line in a deadpan manner. She probably finds herself funny, though I don't find myself funny, so it's easier for me. She knows what she's She's just doing. talented. <laughs> but she, she can do that, so we, can, we bounce off each other really well. And uh, I, I feel like with uh, with Drax and Mantis, the way that they're childlike is that he is childlike in the sense that he's always, he'll say any, anything to anybody, no matter uh, what, yeah. and she's always nice to a point of fault right. as well. Right, and so I think that that's, you know, what makes it forgivable that he does that is because he doesn't have any bad intention behind it. He's just a very a literal person. He takes everything literally, he says everything. He's, he's very honest. He comes from an honest place, doesn't come from a mean place. I love yeah. that, I love that, uh, that uh, uh, the moment when you're on the stage, uh, on the stoop there, yeah. in the steps, and just just talking and chatting and <laughs> looking out at the lake. Yeah, very very <laughs> serene, very nice, calming. Yeah, scene. I, I love it. Love it. The first film, uh, you know, you have to introduce all these characters, give them a mission, and that's essentially what the first film can be. In the second film, we know the characters, so we can go a lot deeper. As we said, we obviously get a lot deeper with your character, but a major theme of this film is sort of what's behind uh, the when someone is an asshole. What is behind all of that? There's there's more to that person a lot of the time. Well, you're laughing, but that's what the movie is about in a <laughs> lot of ways. What did you guys think when you first got the script and you saw how deep it went into each of these characters and what these sort of underlying themes for these characters were? It's much more adult than you would expect. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you read it and you're, and you're like, oh. <clears throat> well, okay. Like, uh, like Dave was like surprised because he thought he was going to go one way and yet uh, Gunn flips it on him and he's gone back another way and 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 we and there are surprises in the script all over the script i mean i i was working out for this one and getting in shape and really in good shape i was becoming this yeah, have a shirtless scene yeah dude, there was a shirtless scene in here and i was gonna get, i was working out i was gonna look good and and about two weeks before uh, uh before i was to do the scene i and i had this this kind of a revelation, you know, you you know, you read the script, and all of a sudden you you get it one way, and then all of a sudden you read it again, and all of a sudden you realize, oh, it shouldn't be that way at all. It should be just the opposite. So I was like, no, 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 I don't, I I should not have this amazing sculpted body, you know, this superhero body. I mean, no. I mean, you find me the when you open we open the movie. You find Yandu in a in a in a very unusual place, and and this has been building up over uh, over his lifetime, right? And uh, you you realize that, whoa, this this dude is like he's not this is he's not what he seems. He's badass leader of the Ravagers and, and you know, d you know, don't look cross-eyed at him or else, you know, that kind of, that kind of guy. And, but the, you, you find him in a very vulnerable, very quiet, very personal, private space. And, and then, you know, um, not even a minute, but 10 seconds later, bam, right back, uh, uh, the facade is on and ready to go at it, you know? And so that, that, that's what I, I saw in the script. And, but I, I, but I didn't realize it until much, much later, because I was just concentrating on, on working Body. out and getting in shape physically, <laughs> and then, and then I'm like, but I've never done that my whole career. Why am I doing it now? 
I never work from the outside in. You know, it's always the opposite. And so most of my most of my characters are developed absolutely solely internally before anything goes on, before any makeup, before any wardrobe, before anything. So that way, the more the when when you do have to do the way the makeup and the wardrobe, and all that is like you know you f you don't even realize it. You, know, it's, you forget about that. That has nothing to do with what's going on, and so um, that's what happened. All of a sudden, I realized what am I, what am I doing? I, I should be going just the other way around with it. You know. So. Michael, what's the toughest character you've ever played? The hardest character that you've ever played? You played so many. My first movie, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, is all is pretty uh, tough. That was I was new in the business. I, I I had only done theater. I hadn't done a film yet, and so I had a lot of a lot of those kinds of pressures. Chicago, I, right? Yeah, in Chicago. Yeah. And so I ended up uh, to combat that. I ended up staying in character uh, the entire time, all day, and uh, and and sort of dropping it at the end of the day, uh, or you know, and and that's how I ended up playing the role. And, and then when in between takes, I would go into my little room and they'd close the door. Sometimes they'd actually lock it on me. <laughs> you just, just didn't want to deal with it. Let's just keep him in there for now. And when we're ready to go, we'll unlock it and he'll come out, okay? And just let him do his thing and then we'll put him back in the room and then let did him make you, Did out. you learn from that role that that type of process isn't necessarily sustainable? It's sustainable if you're able to sustain it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I still have people, even in The Walking Dead, I, I mean, I have people that come up to me, all the other actors say, Herker, I, I, don't, I don't get, I don't know when you're in around a character. I, I don't get it. I, I, I'm like, well, <clears throat> so what? <laughs> it's not your job to figure out if I'm in around a character, you know? And then I just walk away. <laughs> and, they're, and they're left there going like, oh. So it's not about process Terrible. anymore. Should it's, I, it's, should it's, I, it's I don't about know if messing I with people. <laughs> uh, let's get some questions from the audience. Who has a question? Right there. Hey, I love you guys, and y'all total badasses, all right? So if you had to choose, what character would you like your characters to fight? Like any character. To fight? Yeah, to just fight. Fight what? 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 <laughs> we gotta do what? What character would your character, would you like your character to fight? In the movie, like in the characters like, from the in movie? In any universe, just, any just randomly. Oh, any, any superhero? Oh, yeah, yeah, like any like, superhero. That's really easy. Or a person, can it just be a person? Does it have to be a superhero? Fine, or it like could be a person. Who, yeah. who, <laughs> who would Yandu fight? I, I would have to have a, uh, you know, Yandu is very much like me in some ways. Sometimes if, if there's only one person to fight, it's a little bit boring. You can fight an army. It's Yandu. I much prefer to fight several or uh, seven or eight or nine, you know. But Yandu would prefer to fight maybe an army. So <laughs> I don't know. And Drex, I, I mean, his, the guy like can pick up does. a car and throw it, right? Yeah. So it's like these are kind of super. No, I think I Thanos. Crazy Thanos guys. Would be, yeah, it'll be Thanos easy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think One, Drex was created to. Beat the shit out of Thanos. Yeah, right? <laughs> Thanos is going to be, yeah, yeah, Thanos, yeah. It's, yeah, Josh got his hands full. I know, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, 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 dude just whistles, yeah. Guardians 3, uh, yeah, right. Volume 3 has been announced already, hasn't it? That they're going to do a Volume 3. Yeah. Have you guys talked at all about where your characters are going to go? Not at all. No, not at all. I have no idea. We trust we in James. We don't know. We can't talk. We don't. We haven't even read yeah. the script. It's Gunn's crazy mind that's going to create that stuff, yeah. not us. Next question. Yeah. Hi guys. Oh yeah. Oh there, there you are. <laughs> Hi, I'm over here. Uh, just with Marvel, the cinematic universe being so large, and there's so many, so many heroes. Do you guys ever feel pressure to like almost it, like? Are you making your own film, or are you worried about also setting up for everything in the future? And is that, was there a moment when you guys saw and you were like, holy crap, I'm a hero. Like, I'm a superhero. Doing this kind of, doing this kind of movie is, uh, is sort of like, oh, any movie, really. You just, you know what, dude, like life. You just take it one step at a time. You can't worry about what's in the future or what's happened in the past. It may influence you, yeah, but you got to just deal with what's in front of you, what's on the what's on the plate right there, 
and that's how I deal with stuff. Yeah, I think it's the same. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, we all just want to give a great performance. We're not thinking so much outside of our, our bubble of performance, you know. Yeah. Next question. Hi. Uh, Dave, I wanted to know, uh, transitioning from wrestling into the acting world, how was that for you? And I want to know, are the two of you comic book fans before you guys worked on this film? It was, uh, it was, it was rough. You know, I've talked about it a lot. It was a rough, uh, for one, you have to understand that I really left behind a very lucrative career in professional wrestling. And the reason I did that is because they wouldn't let me pursue things like acting outside the company while I was with them. And there was other, other wrestlers who were afforded that opportunity within the company. I wasn't. So I didn't think it was fair. I thought it should be afforded the opportunity. If I wasn't, I wasn't going to resign. So I, I, I let my contract run out, and I just I left with no offers, no support from the WWE. I just left and took a chance on myself. And there was about three years that I just I barely worked. I mean, I worked like one job a year because I just couldn't get any jobs. You know, I, I couldn't get even auditions. And it was Guardians of the Galaxy that was, you know, my few, first few, huge opportunity. And it just opened up the floodgates, man. I mean, I've been working ever since, and it opened up so many doors. Because people saw me in a different light. They actually saw me as an actor instead of, you know, as an ex-meathead who just wanted to be, a, to, be a, to be a movie star. And that's how people perceived me. I know it sounds it's funny, but that's how people perceived me. They had this preconceived notion of who I was before I walked through the door. And they thought I was the guy, you know, screaming and hitting people with chairs on the WWE, and that's not who I am. And I was just another character I portrayed. But I had that label slapped on me, and it was hard to get rid of. How does that label affect your preconceived notions of others when you meet people and you're, you're in the industry and you're trying to meet people? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty open-minded, you know? And I usually, man, I really, you know, I'm one of those people. I, I like people, man, and I always, you know, I'm more, you know, I'm more likely to have faith that somebody is a good person and be upset or usually sometimes you know, taken advantage of when people are not, you know, because I have faith in people. But, yeah, and I usually ex expect uh, people to be you know, good-natured people, man. I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm similar. Yeah. I trust everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one trusts you. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is probably the, the most kindest naturally the most friendliest person I've ever met. You know, I, I'm telling you, man, I love this guy. And, and really, really, I, I, I never saw him as the big meathead guy. I, I, I never, I didn't watch the wrestling. Maybe I, I didn't know your stuff, but um, I, I did when I was like 12. But you weren't even in, you weren't born yet, I don't think. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I I always like right away. My gosh, we hooked up, and is just a really friendly and wonderful, wonderful person, and and is just absolutely opposite of me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> totally opposite. <laughs> I think I have time for uh, a couple more questions. Two more questions. Next question over here. Hi, how's it going? Um, so in the movie, you're blue and you're green gray. How is that process? when getting the makeup on and get, getting it off and acting in it? Oh, that, that, that's kind of easy stuff, you know? Um, we, uh, you know, we get, we get the opportunity to, to do these roles and, and to put on this, uh, the, the whole makeup stuff is like, it's true, I mean, truly, it's, it's like, we get, we get like five, six layers of paint on our bodies, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you got a whole, your whole torso is all yeah. painted but it's up. It's really not that bad. And, it's about like an hour and a half. And we it's forget just, about it. You know, yeah. I forget about it after, yeah. after about you do. Four, four or five hours, you forget it's there. Yeah. It's that first like 10 minutes when it starts going on. I, for me, anyway, that it's for just, you, it, yeah. it just feels horrible, man. Well, your, your removal is way yeah, more. My removal is a little bit, a little bit that's rough. That's rough. <laughs> what's, the, how does the, what's the removal well, process? So, good, so. You tell him, man. You got to, he does all, he, he. Oh, well, so, you get well. Let me start it out. You can. <laughs> you, he has a whole sauna set up. Yeah, continue. Yeah. I, so I, because my process is it goes on really fast now, but it's very abrasive. Uh, so it's like glue stuck to my body. So at the end of the day, the easiest way to get it off is to actually start to sweat it off. So they stick me in a sauna. First, they rub me in shaving cream because it helps to loosen it up. I know it sounds really weird. It feels weird and it looks weird. But so I go and I sit in the sauna for about 20 minutes by myself, and then my team comes in and it usually takes them about 30, 40 more minutes to get it off. He gets it's a full body massage from, yeah, every from time he of, works. Front, every time guys. he works by a bunch of guys, <laughs> like about eight hands. Is that, is that too hard, Dave? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I think we have to have one more question. Hi, guys. 
Hi. Uh, I want to know about you guys. How's it like to work with Kurt Russell for the first time in the movie? Uh, it's not the first time I worked with Kurt. We did Tombstone together. Right. So, yeah, this is my, my second time uh, ever in, in my career working with Mr. Russell. We've, and it was sort of like old home week and uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We didn't have a lot of... Um, a lot of a lot of stuff to do, me and Kurt together. But uh, I I got to see him and hang out and watch his work and get to go and do. I, I think I did maybe one or two scenes yeah. that uh, he was involved with. Yeah, and I thought he was great. I was nothing but impressed with Kurt. He's uh, because he doesn't come. In, he didn't really separate himself from us at all. He came in. He just you know he said this to me. Um, he said he wanted to, he wanted to be a part of the team. You know, and that's like an athlete's mentality. Because so he didn't separate himself. He came in. He wanted to blend in. He wanted to be very social with everybody. He's really a conversationalist, so it's always a good conversation. But that was a, the main thing. He was just he didn't separate himself from us at all. He just came in and just wanted to hang out with us. And, and be Do you guys feel like a team, or I mean, family, for lack of a better word, at this point, shooting the second film together? Or is it happens. It's a natural occurrence. I mean, you get you're thrown together in one little room or one little, on one set, and you you. We actors are all very similar in that, I mean, um, I, I, and I think uh, for myself and uh, most most actors that I know of that you, you just, you almost, you, you just hit it off kind of yeah. like, you know, there's not too many of us that are really quite abrasive toward one another. You know, it, it happens, but not too often. It didn't. I don't, I've yeah. never seen it happen once on the set of Guardians, and I think it has to do a lot, has a lot to do with James Gunn. I mean, he handpicked all of us. You know, and there was a reason for that. And he's such a wonderful person. I think he wanted to be to be surrounded by nice people. He didn't want to, he didn't want any assholes on set. Yeah, well, you yeah. know what? The life is too short, and he Life's he's a firm believer short. in that. I, I am as well. I think most of us are. And it's like, come on, oh, yeah, we're gonna let's go. And you know what? The main objective and all of this stuff is, for the audience as well as the actors is enjoy and have fun. I think have people are going to have a really great time at this film. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 opens this Friday, right? I mean, or Thursday. Oh, yeah, baby. Tonight. People can start seeing it tonight. Guys, congratulations. It's a phenomenal film. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Woo!